I've got I've got three kinds of liquor here. I got the fighting kind, the loving kind, and the banger picking kind. Now which one do you want, Well, I think all the banger picking kind. All right, let's handle that. <laughs> Now, you talk about picking that goddamn banjo, you can now after you got charged up on that. <laughs> hard to please any damn way. So, I believe now we'll go in here and light this thing. I believe I'll go in here and light this thing now. And hope it don't take a fit like it did the last time. The last time, it about blowed me up. Well, now I'm going to tell you about the, this fella from down the eastern part of North Carolina. I made some out of apricots one time. And he got some of it. And he said that shit made him so horny he couldn't stand it. And he's back again. I had some more of it. He wanted every damn bit of it. I said, no, I can't let you have it all. I said, I've got to keep a jar to it for my other friends. And... I know he wasn't telling no lie about the damn stuff making him horny. Because Leon Wells and his son Ricky, they both told me the same damn story. So I know good and well that it's right. So, Leon's boy's named Ricky, by the way. But anyway, I'm going to go in here and try to light this thing. And I hope it don't blow me plumb hour like I've had it to do before. I've had my beard burn off with it. And my hands burnt. And I'm going to try it again.
had to get out of there, man. Them damn gas fumes about to get me. This cut off broom is to keep that meal rubbed off the top of that core. If you don't, it'll stick and burn and it'll scorch your liquor. And besides that, it'll ruin your pot. So you have to keep that rubbed off there pretty often. If you don't, it'll stick and then you burn the whole damn shooting match. on this thing. We've got to run on propane now to heat the generator. That thing works just like a Coleman gas stove. You have to get the generator hot before it starts generating. So, I'm going to turn the fuel to it to see if I can get it to start generating. Sometimes it's hard to do and sometimes it's not. It's kind of dangerous too. You can watch it when I pull that generator out and all that uh, vapor in there, that white fog looking stuff is uh, gas. And it could explode in here and blow this whole thing up. I've had it to light the whole damn building up.
propane thing back up. I've got the generators hot now, and I've got both of them generating. And I hope the hell it don't stop up with a piece of rust, or I'll have to go through the whole thing again. Go in here and take this cut off broom and scrub them cords again. And one of these days when I'm up there scrubbing that damn thing, I'll probably get a self castration job. That bar will probably burn it off. Sure got the horsefire. I couldn't stand to stick my head down there on just about a half a second. That's it. So now I'm going in here and charge the sump keg up. You need a four or five gallon of backings in the sump keg before you cap put the cap on it. So that backings it gives it a second distillation on one run when you run it through with a sump post. Going all the way to the bottom of the keg, steam filter through that backing. Then it comes back out and hits the condenser. And now I'm going to go charge the thumb stack. Something else. So, I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this paste over here and mix it up right now. And then I'm going to go in there and paste the pump post connection and the condenser connection. I don't run a worm like other people. I run a condenser. It's almost big around the steel barrel and it sits in 200 gallon water with cold water going in the bottom and pushing the hot water off the top. Condenser over there in that cooling tub cost me a thousand and twenty eight dollars. It was made professionally in a sheet metal shop somewhere, and ain't nobody's goddamn business for that. But anyway, uh, I'm going to get the paste and mix it up, and then I'll go in there and paste them connections. wheat bran. And when you put it around that cap and around them connections, when that hot steam comes up there and hits that, that goddamn place will get harder than a minister's paper.
now what I'm going to do is go out here and put some mire in this uh, pressure tank. The pressure tank is made out of an old hot water heater tank. It holds 45 gallon fuel. So uh, I'm going to go out here and put some uh, mire in the pressure tank. A long time ago when I was making liquor on Snowbird, used to be had to pump that pressure tank for the swim old timey tar pumps. Now you talk about a back breaking job, keeping that pressure up in that tank it was. But now all I do is stick a goddamn hose to it at an air compressor pump. So uh, I've got the air pressure built up to 90 pounds now like I usually keep it. And uh I'm going back in and rub the cores so it won't stick on me. And then I'll figure out what I'm going to do after that. Next step around. Now this is getting almost hot enough to cap. It won't take too much longer. So now I'm going to get the cap and scrape my old paste off of it where it's used lifetime. Had to put new paste every time. And once I get that old paste scraped off of there, why, when it gets hot enough, Put the cap on. So, I'm going to go over here and scrape this old paste off right now and get it ready to go. This cap here. You can tell it's been patched here in yonder. It was chopped out of the hill. The fella found it on the mountain here in Maggie Valley. Right down here, he said, Fox Point, you reckon you can fix that? I said, hell yeah, I'll fix that. But they chopped the arm up on it so damn bad you couldn't fix it. So I had to make a new arm and put on it. And a horse's head. The horse's head's that crooked part out here on the end on it. And, uh, now I'm going to scrape this face off there. Sets up. As old saying is, it gets harder in a miniature pressure. Somebody making liquor, 
old so-and-so won't work. All he does is lay on his ice and make old liquor. Now, if they'd try to make it around this goddamn shit, they'd see how they lay on their ice. about bigger than I am. I can't hardly lift anymore. I've got arthritis in my arm. I'm going to have to quit making this shit one of these days, it looks like. Well, it's been a few days ago when I made this. I believe this part of the film was made in 1997, the best I can remember. That's the last time I made these lips. And I ain't going to ever make no more brandy. It's too hard to work. I'm not able to do it. But I don't guess I'll ever plumb quit making liquor. When I get so I can't carry a damn bag of sugar, Roger Acord, from Summersville, West Virginia, said he'd carry the goddamn stuff first. Another thing about Roger, one time we was unloading sugar, and uh, I'd have carried one bag at a time, 50 pounds. I looked around and here come Roger with four damn sacks. I said, by God, Roger, is that all you can carry? He said, hell no, that if I could get a hold of some more, I'd carry it too. He's one stout fella. He's like a sore dick. He's hard to beat. I'd go give him a drink of this stuff in this jug, but I don't want to make him sick right yet. This is back, and it'll make you sicker than hell. No. We, don't, we don't want him to get sick. We want him to pick another human anyway, and then I might give him a drink of it. <laughs> no. I'm going to go in here. And... Put the cap on this thing. This cap right here, uh, the purpose of it uh, is when you mash gets the boil and then the pot, the steam comes up, the cap catches it, it goes out that big arm yonder, it's called the cap arm, and where it turns down out there, it's called the horse's head. And then that steam comes up the cap, out the arm, down through the horse's head into the sump post. And the sump post goes all the way to the bottom of that big six five gallon wooden barrel. It filters through five gallon of backing as it goes through there, and that catches any water or fusel oil or any impurities that might be in your mic. And then when it comes out of that condenser over there, it's 180 proof when it first comes out, and every jug you run comes down in proof just a little bit. So I think I'm going to go in here and put the cap on this thing and let go of the mic.
put the cap on there and you talk about going to help the job. About all I can do is put that big thing up there. This piece of wood here, you put it on top of the cap before you lay them four concrete blocks on it. Because if you don't, that's the top of that cap will go up and down you can hear it thump for a half a mile. So, you put this piece of wood on there and you put four of them big heavy cap blocks on there. If you don't, that goddamn cap will go through the ceiling. And we don't need that. So, I'm going to go in here and put the blocks up on it. And we'll go fix you another one on the banjo while I do this.
I've got to come out here for a breath of fresh air because that guy is about to get me. I'm sure you can see the sweat coming down my damn face now. About my hat here. This hat used to belong to Oliver Hicks at the bend of the river. His wife, Lisa, used to give it to me many years ago, and I've been able, able to hang on to it somehow. I don't know how much kids I've been through. But they gave Oliver this hat in 1931 when they turned him out of prison. He'd done three years for making illegal moonshine liquor. So I'll just wear the Oliver hat. I hope the hell they don't give me one that like it, because I'd rather have this anyway. You seen me put around that where the horse's head connects to the sump post. That makes that face set up faster and harder. Uh, well, I've got it all faced in now. Unless I find a leak somewhere, I have to stop. Sometimes you'll find a little leak if you don't get when you first face it. You have to go back over sometime later. Back a little old leak once in a while. 
that is part of the job. But uh, the steam now is coming out of over at well, see the cap and it's almost down in the front cage. Uh, it shouldn't be too much longer. The liquor starts pouring out of some way. And I hope how soon it does, so this is one hell of a hard hot job. I'll go over here now and put my hose down in the, where the condenser is and get ready to turn the water on because you have to have that hose all the way to the bottom of that cooling tub to push that hot water off the top to keep that condenser cool. Uh, if you don't get it cool, if you're running hot it makes the liquor meaner than hell. And, uh, and if you didn't have it water running all the time, you'd blow steam out the condenser and you'd be losing the liquor. When you lose steam, you lose liquor. Even if there's just a little tiny hole around any connection, well, every little bit of steam you lose, that thicker you block. So you gotta watch out for all the connections, keep them facing each other. Well, I'm going in here now and put the water down into the cooling tub. A lot of people call it a flake pan. I call it a cooling tub. Most people use the worm and put it down the big old steel barrel. Like I said, I don't use the worm, I use the condenser. And I made the thing out of sheet metal that the condenser sets in, so none of that water gets into your liquor, so it don't matter what kind of metal the cooling stuff made out of. But if you're going to make any liquor, you need to use stainless steel or copper, or a stainless steel box of copper cap. Uh, I don't believe in using that galvanized sheet metal. Uh, I've seen some of that stuff take goddamn hair off a wooden leg. So, I'm going back in here and fix my water, and I believe Wells is sucking up in the pick you enough.
show the city. And uh, I only wear it on occasion when I need to. Uh, like I said, I ain't made no liquor since 1997. But I'm going to make some more at the Museum of Appalachia. October the 7th, 8th, and 9th, 1999. I'm going to put them on a show down there. They never have had nobody do that before. So I'm going to be there the 7th, 8th, and 9th of October. If you want to see how it's done, just come on down. At the Museum of Appalachia, North Tennessee. Uh, so, good to be back in Birmingham, ain't it? Anyway, my, my mind ain't along with my pecker anymore. I can't remember much. It ain't that long anyway, so that don't make a damn anyway. But, uh, I better go back in here and check the seam on this thing if it hit the condenser yet. It, it should be in there just in a minute, so I'll go see. sniff that condenser. Now you talk about some stout stuff. It's fixing to come out uh, pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to have to hunt me a piece of paper to go in there and put on the ground. I don't want all that mud to get on my jug. It gets wet around there. That water seeps in there where the jug sits on the ground. I like to try to keep it clean as I can. When this stuff starts coming out of there, I've got a funnel in there. It's got white field ants and hickory barcodes. It filters through that park hole and that white felt, and it catches any fuel oil or water or whatever might come to it. Anything that's not pure, it'll catch it. And then before I put it in the jars, brand new half gallon jars, I filter it through white felt again. You don't see no shit floating around my damn lip. I ain't never sold nobody a jar yet that they didn't come back and want some more of it. So that should tell you something. But, uh, I'm going to get me a piece of paper and go in there and put down and keep the mud off my jug while I've got it on my mind. If I don't, I'll forget it. Like I said, my mind ain't as long as my pecker know how, and it ain't that goddamn long, so, so much for that.
tell you about my liquor. It's some stout ass stuff. It'll make a hard shell Baptist fall from grace. And I don't know what in the hell it'd do to an unscriptured method. I guess they just have to try it and find out. I'm a whiskey paleon myself. I love that liquor. So, I'm going to take me another break. So, I'll come back in a minute for something else. Now, this bottle here has got a piece of white felt in it. It's got hickory bark on it. That's what I filled in my liquor suit. <laughs> got cigarette ash in I'll get them out. Anyway, by the time I get back over yonder to that damn condenser, liquor should be a pouring out of it. I'm going to take this final over and get ready to start catching it. When it filters through its spark holes, there ain't nothing in it. It catches everything. talking about somebody having somebody caught making this liquor. About some things I've got a heart as big as Texas. But somebody will turn you in for making this goddamn liquor. My heart ain't as big as a goddamn that thing. So anybody that do that ain't nothing but a 24 carat son of a bitch. Now shut that right burner down. That thing, if it's a popping and a cracking, it could come apart. So I ain't gonna take no chances on blowing it up today. I'm not in that big a hurry. I, I'd like to make another run or two before I get blowed to hell anyway. I see it a puffing steam out of the condenser over there. It always does that when it first starts. Uh, I see it a dripping a little bit now. By the time I get over there, it should be a little tiny stream about like a match stem coming out of it, and then it'll get bigger. You can run up to four gallon a minute on that big condenser, but it's not good to do that because it makes your liquor meaner than hell. The slower you run it, the better it is. I regulate it, and it'll run a gallon about every 15 minutes. It should be cut down to 30 minutes, but I ain't got time to let it run that slow. So, since I cut that other burner, it'll take it another couple of minutes now to come out. Anyway, I'd rather for it to come out and not come out at all. So, I'm going over here and place my funnel, and it should be out real short. Beginning to come out now. I kept my hand partially over that condenser and let it con up in there a little, let a little of it run out to get the backings out of it from a previous run. So, but you don't cap your hand fully over that condenser spout because if you do, it'll blow the damn cap off the seal. So, it's running now and it's 
running about like a match stem, but it'll pick up there just in a couple of minutes. It'll be running the stream all, almost the size of a pencil. And that's a damn big stream. I'm going to go in here and look at it one more time. And I've got to turn my water on too, because you have to have that cold water pushing that hot off the top. So I'll turn my water on while I'm in there too. that cap, that's the way I check the pressure on that cap, you can tell by the sound of it, whether it's hollow or tight. You got to keep checking on it, if it gets too tight, it'll blow the cap on it. Now this old wine bottle here, is what I use for a proof testing bottle. When it first comes out, I catch me a bottle out, and I see how fast them beads flashes off. That tells me that it's 180 proof, or a little better maybe. But, uh, now I'm going to check the proof on it. Well, hell, that's way past 180, because they won't even stay there a half a second. Them big beads, bigger than mule's eye. It's going to turn out a hell of a bunch this time. Somewhere around. 75 gallons, and I won't miss it much. That is a 12 barrel stainless steel pot, it holds 600 gallons. Uh, so I'm gonna go in here and pour this back in the jug. It's nearly full now. When I pour this bottle in, it should fill that jug up.
Now you talk about some high ass liquor. I got higher than hell just sitting in there in front of that condenser fumes coming off that stuff. I'm about drunker than hell right now. I didn't even drink now. That's a cheap drunk, ain't it? But anyway, I'm gonna take this and see what it does. Why it's the goddamn high it won't stay there half a second. Look at it. That's the way you want it. The bigger the beads and the faster it flashes off, that means the higher proof it is. You want to get all you can out of this stuff as hard of work as you have to do to get it. It ain't nothing but pure hell. But once it ever gets in your blood, you won't never quit fooling with it. So you either die or get so damn old that you can't do it anyway. Age has got a limit on all things you do. Such as making liquor and a couple other things. So, I'm gonna set this jug over here on the table where I set it before I temper it. And then that other jug in there, it should be full in about 10 more minutes. get this run done, that whole damn table there will be full, 72 gallons. And then when I get, the, when I get it all done, I'll take it off the, temp from, off the table where I put it. I pour it in that black tub you see over here. That's a kid's swimming pool is what that is. And then I blend the low proof with the high proof till I get to the point I want it, which is 100 proof where I leave mine. You can't sell weak damn liquor no how. Some people can, but I can't. But, uh, I don't put no beading oil or none of that shit in. I don't dope my liquor in no way. If I can't make it right, I'll just quit. So, uh, I'm gonna go in here and check this other jug. And then the next step after I get it all run, is you'll be seeing me pour it in the tempering tub. And when I get the right proof I want it, which is a hundred, I'll take it out of the tub and put it in a brand new half gallon jar. So I'm going back in here and check my jug. I don't want to run over because that damn stuff too hard to get to lose any of it. Even my mat size full up. ready to temper a little bit of this stuff here today. I have to get my tub cleaned out first. Don't make no nasty ass liquor. Keep everything clean. I can't stand to see a jug of liquor with something floating around in it. That's as bad as jumping this stuff. I believe they'd fly 40 miles to get to jump in a jug of it. I've sure done a lot of things in my life. I've worked in factories, worked on construction, cutting wood, just about everything anybody could do to make a nickel out of that, I reckon, even pick up beer cans. But <clears throat> making this damn liquor is one of the hardest things that anybody will ever do in their life. If they don't believe it, just try it one time and see. So, I'm going to temper a little bit of this. The way you temper it, you take your, your low jug of, when it quits beating, that's called backings. 
you take a jug of bacon and mix it with a jug of high shots. You keep getting one of each till you get it to the right proof you want it, which is a hundred proof, and then that's where you stop it at. So I'm gonna pour some in here. jug or the beads goes off real fast when you shake it. Yeah, that's a jug of high shot, sir. Get a jug of this, it don't hold the bead like a high shock does it. This the small bead, and they go away real fast. That shows you the proof, and the liquor is low. And as you pour this in here, you have to keep it stirred so it'll be all blended together and come out, you know. Don't keep it stirred, it won't blend right. It's been a while since I made any liquor. One of these days I'm going to make me one more damn run and then I'm going to quit. I'm getting so I ain't able to fool with it. it. Takes a lot of hard work and carrying and lifting and I'm getting so I ain't able to do it so I'm probably one of these days just make me one run just to say I made my last run. Quit fooling with it. smelling liquor, I know that. Once I get it tempered, See, them jugs over there is my catch jugs, these gallon jugs like this here. That's what you catch it in. But once I put it in this tub, it comes back out and put it in brand new half gallon jars. You can't find these no more. Uh, I don't know what anybody put their liquor in. If they ain't got some of these, I just happen to have a few of them stashed back. So I don't know what I'm going to put it in. When these are done. So, once I get it all in here, get it in the right proof I want it, which is a hundred proof. Like I said, I put it in these brand new half gallon jars. <coughs> and once I get it to the right proof I want it, See, it's first filtered when it comes out of the condenser through charcoal and white felt. Well, before it goes in the jar, it's filtered again uh, through white felt again. You don't see nothing floating around my damn liquor.
see how clear that is? There's not nothing floating around that. I've seen it with all kind of shit, ain't floating around gnats and whatever, I don't know. But you're damn sure not see it in mine. Watch it hold that bait. When that big bead up hangs half over and half under, that tells you that that liquor is 100 proof. So I've got that right. I mean, it's ready to go, and it'll stay that way, too. So I guess... Since I've got this in the tub and start jarring up and everything, I guess I'll quit this job and go listen to Leon and his son Ricky pick a little bit. <laughs> something different on the banjo. A little Mexican team. Dickie's hard to beat. Ain't that the truth? So now, I guess they're gonna play another. They might play one. I might dance a lick or two. I don't Let's know. Do According to if they get. Nice one, popcorn. 
Well, uh, if you if you can play enough music to get me danced, by God, I might. Well, I think you need to right here. Next time if you're going to dance, go over by the door and dance so I can get everybody. <laughs> oh, <I'll do> it. <laughs> can you edit this? Oh, yeah. I ain't going to, though. <laughs> that, that, means that means we're doing a pretty good job, Doc. Well, uh, it's fun. <laughs> he, can, he can hook out right straight to these television show and take four leaves here. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I could, but I don't have my adapter. Oh. Down thumb, big. I cannot pick that thumb. I'm oh. making all kinds. Of oh, he's still filming. You didn't know that, did you? Is he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the jail, you say. <laughs> jail, you say. Goddamn. The jail, you say. <laughs> Man, Rick, you're going to sing one. Rick, you're going to do it. Go real. Oh, oh, He's going to do an old tear journey mm -hmm. for you now. Sing me a duet there. I'd like to hear one anyway. This is a song that, uh, it's a real quiet song. Very few people have ever heard. It's a real sad song. Really can you really sing me job. one about well, somebody else? And I probably don't remember the words. And, uh, and don't call no names. You can edit it out, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do this together. Let me uh, no. I'll put it out for you. No. What is it? You, you ain't on that now. Yeah. Oh, we are. Yeah. We're rolling. What's the name of it? You're my son, Ricky, now. You done good anyway. They forgot the words. Oh my god damn it. It's been years since I've done it. It's been so long. We ain't done ten years, no lie. You cut that out though, can't you? I'll leave it in there. You ain't going to. I wouldn't leave it in there. Do your best salary. Sounds good. We don't care what it is. Hold and bring it together since you're gone. Oh Lord, they give me crying, popcorn. I'll be crying like We might as well cry now later. This is a good read. This is right here. Yeah, yeah. Well, no wonder I can't find it. You're goddamn right. Well, Lord, what the hell? I'm a bad I know we're going to stop it now. There's no way. That's good to be 
back to Birmingham. What happened to that, Joe? It's all right, man. Have you got some more in there? You're too down. Good morning, you can write. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if you don't tune down for that. Here we go. My friend. Yeah, bro.
Do what? Right. I'll do all this over again. Hell no. <laughs> I thought we were doing my old tune popcorn. And Absolutely, we got to do it all right. What is it? The banjo ain't been tuned since we started. Go for it, Will. I want to do them all tune that uh, Bruce Whitaker, man I love, just like a daddy. Please, this is my daddy and I, I love him too. This tape's going to go nationwide there, bro. That's all right. But I'll tell you what, he's dead and gone now with every one of his favorite songs. And I'll find you my gold watch and chain. That's yeah. a good old tune. Yeah, go ahead. Here it is. Get your daddy tuned back up. Well, <laughs> like a throw a picker. That's a good old tune. breakdown is that's the truth right okay <laughs> song for Beverly Hillbillies. Beverly Hillbillies.
real good. Cow yeah. feet, I have a heap in heaven of it. Well, now I'll pick one on the banjo. Like a girl left me, she went away. Now she's gone. Maggie Valley by God, North Carolina. Maggie Valley, North Carolina. Hemp Hill. What cat play? I've seen your picture somewhere today. Where's it at? Probably on a goddamn morning post. <laughs> Could've been on a business card. <laughs> I think I got one of your business cards. You a businessman? Oh yeah, very busy. Very busy. Man. Ben, don't do that. Ben, do ben, a little song with it, boss. Just sing the song. Been you see it a long time ago. Which one you want to sing? Will you miss me when I'm gone? I'm gonna kick it off for you. Place like home. When your brother-in-law lays around about half shot, 
Moonshine Hill. <laughs> 